اللهم جنبنا الشيطان وجنبنا ما رزقتنا اللهم جنبنا الشيطان وجنبنا شيطانا مما رزقتنا او الله protect us from shaitan and protect that which we... shaitan means like the devil okay so for people who don't know provide for us from shaitan meaning our our child if we have this with sexual intercourse if we have a child protect not only us protect the child imam mujahid rahimullah who was a student of the companions he mentioned something powerful he took from this he said look why is the married couple being told oh allah protect us from shaitan at the time of sex and protect the child we understand protect the child because that's the time that you might conceive a child so shaitan wants to try and get to the child straight from the beginning straight from conception so you say allah protect the child from conception but what about you and your wife why is it that you need to seek protection from shaitan at that time he said this hadith is an evidence to show that shaitan or an evil jinn the shayateen remember there's the one main shaitan which yeah, is iblis yeah. then there's the shayateen which are which are the evil jinn basically yeah the minions the minions all right so the way guy it works is that you have shay the iblis is the main shaitan okay so the again these are the closest translation okay the closest translation okay i know it's not the same think of jinns as demons and you have good demons and bad demons so you have good jinns and bad jinns think of shayateen as devils right and basically it could be said that the bad jinns or the bad demons are devils like especially the ones who are uh, allied with the main devil or lucifer or what they call iblis right so you have jinns and then you have shayateen which is the devils and then you have the main devil the the main devil at the top which is Iblis or Lucifer, right? So I'm just translating to Chris. So think of it as like a circle within a circle, right? So you have the biggest circle, which is the gens, and within that circle, so that's good good demons, good gens and bad gens. And within that circle, we have a subcategory, which is the Shayateen. And the Shayateens are like the devils, and they're all bad, and they're all like in the army of the main devil or the main shaitan which is iblis iblis is the name of the head guy the guy that is in charge of all these minions which is like kind of like kind of like lucifer no devil i don't think it's no no i think devil yeah devil no 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 that's not so demon is the closest translation to jen no i don't agree with this one i think the closest translation to iblis is lucifer because devil we have multiple devils in um it was shayotin right iblis is just one dude iblis is just one dude but devil is like a whole bunch of there's many devils that's why it's not shaitan it's shayotin so iblis would be closest translation to iblis would be lucifer it's name of one guy yes no, the devil would be lucifer yes the devil would be lucifer or iblis so devil with the capital d would be um lucifer or iblis um but devil with the lower case d would be just devils which is shayateen no you're saying only one devil no it's called shay in islam this is shayateen so there's devils maybe in christianity there's one devil but there's in, in islam there's devils Yeah, Satan is just another name for that one guy, for uh, Lucifer, or, yeah. The shayateen, they, they, they can be present at the time of you being into... Yeah, the problem is that in the devil in the devil in Christianity is just like one devil, but in, in Arabic, in the Quran, we say shayateen. So we don't say shaitan, we say shayateen. So there's not just one shay... So the, mo the best translation for the shaitan is the, the devil, but there's the plural for shaitan is shayateen so it's devils hey with your wife deborah I'm, I'm right right like do you agree is this what you learn as well they're there what? because remember they they're perverts they're sick they're filthy they're evil devils they love filth so they would love to see you know, two people, you know, they want to invade your privacy and just watch you have sex for them. It's like the same way a human wants to watch porn.
right? A human might want to watch another people, uh, a couple having sex, the same way they want to do that. And sometimes he said, Imam Mujahid, the shaitan will get involved. He'll get involved in the sexual intercourse. He would be doing. Okay, if any any devils who is fe okay, I'm putting this out there. Okay, any shaitan that is a girl and it's also hot. If I'm, if they want to join in and have a threesome when I'm having sex, they're free to do so. Okay, open an invitation. Doing things to your wife, who be doing things to your husband at the time. So the way to protect yourself is to say, Allahumma jannib na shaitan wa jannib na shaitan min ma razaqtana. Oh Allah, safeguard and protect us from shaitan and safeguard and protect that which you provide for us if it's a child from shaitan as well. Now that's the case for a married couple. Now of course, if you read that... Yeah, married couple is okay. If you want to spice up your relationship with a threesome, invite a sexy jinn. The eye, you're good. When do you read it? Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said you can read it before you even take your clothes off. You can read it at a time when you're naked. You can read it just before you enter into your spouse. The point is that you read it before you do intimacy. Okay? Now, if that's the case with a married couple, shaitan is coming to them when they are in halal. Then what about if you're not even married and you're just watching porn? You're, you're, you're asking for shaitan to jump on you. You're yeah, I am openly asking. You're asking shaitan to violate you. Yes. You're asking him to possess you. Wallahi, billahi, wa tallahi. I used to know a friend when I was in Jahiliya. And he told me, he told me that when he used, there was a particular woman, he would go and he would do zina with her. And at the time of zina, he would say that when we were basically about to finish the act and when they both would reach to ejaculation, he said, I would feel a demon enter me. I would feel something overcome me. And we used to just think, what's this guy on? Because we were jahili, listening to these stories or whatever have you. And he used to say it, and then I remember, Wallahi, I'm not kidding you, in that same gathering when I was listening to these guys, another guy, another one of my friends, from my friends, I said, the same thing happens to me. So I was like, what? This is common. You man are just getting possessed. And then he mentioned, this happens to other people that I know. So I was like, whoa, you guys actually experiencing. He's like, you feel this energy of something else there, something else enter you. <laughs> I feel the energy of something else enter me up my butt. Because sometimes he goes, one of them said, I, I, I will do with a woman and I, I, she, she starts like basically reacting like there's a demon inside of her. So I'm like, right, this is common amongst you people. And you're what the hell are you talking about? Still doing it. Life. Brothers and sisters, is something you want to save yourself from. Because that shaitan could destroy your life. And ultimately, the look what he considers evidence. Some people said something, and then some other people said something similar. Must be true. God wants to lead you to kufr. So if it possesses you, it wants to stop you from praying. It wants to from this, 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 this until you leave Islam. So it will take you. It will try to take you away from your dunya and your akhirah. Protect yourself from life. My sister, some of you, some of you, Allah, you're disobeying Allah by not covering yourself. You're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not covering yourself, by not, ah. by not wearing the jilbab or the niqab. Some, if you believe... The niqab, like he's saying, like, you have to cover your face as well or you could be attacked by demons, by jinns. Jesus Christ, see? Blaming the victim again. Whoa, Harris Sultan is here. Boom. Look at how he enters. Wow. So, <laughs> guys, we have Harris Sultan in the house. If the niqab is obligatory, then wear that. And if, if you believe jilbab is obligatory, wear that. The jilbab is the item of clothing which, you know, it, co it covers you from here. That, the, it's like the hijab garment that you wear on the head. Guys, make sure you, you guys, make sure you uh, um, subscribe to Harris Sultan's YouTube channel, okay? Harris Sultan uh, is covering, doing some really good videos covering Islam. And I also downloaded his video recently. He covered some... Hindu Hindu scripture, some ridiculous Hindu scripture. So I, I downloaded that to, to watch that later. So go check that out. It must be good. Okay. Uh, so Harris, search for Harris Sultan's YouTube channel, uh, Islam, Pakistan, um, and now Hinduism as well. So go check that out. It covers your your chest, goes down, and it's very and and, and the undergarment that you wear underneath. When I say undergarment, I mean underneath the the hijab, the like the. The, what you would call the abaya, but it's not an abaya. It's a jibab because it's more loose, it's more baggy. That is what you have to wear. Every woman has to wear that because Allah said that in the Quran, Surah Al Ahzab, Allah used the word jilbab. That's the minimum that a woman has to wear. The abaya, which is tight, it's not correct. Wallahi, it's not. 
the hijab. Well, it's not correct. I can see your curves. And if I can see your curves, the gen can see your curve. And if the gen can see your curve, you're asking for it. You're asking for it.